It's Wednesday, the 5th of March, and this is The Slice. On the programme today, the role of telcos in the AI era, commercialising network automation, AI on RAN for edge computing, new telco business models, and preparing for 6G. Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels and welcome to Wednesday's edition of The Slice. Over the course of this week, I'll be reporting from the Telecom TV studio, while my colleagues Ray Lemaitre and the editorial team will be providing coverage from the show floor. And it may be day three of MWC, but there is still plenty of news to report. So let's hear once again from Ray with his latest daily analysis. Another telco has joined the AI RAN club. As we reported earlier this week, Nokia highlighted its AI RAN advances with T-Mobile US and KDDI on the eve of the MWC25 show. And now the Finnish vendor has added Intersat Uridu Hutchison, or IOH as it's known, to that list. The Indonesian operator has announced it's working with Nokia and NVIDIA to deploy what it refers to as a unified accelerated computing infrastructure for hosting both AI and RAN workloads. The three companies have agreed to develop, test and deploy an AI RAN solution with an initial focus on managing AI inference workloads using NVIDIA's AI aerial system and then, later on, to integrate RAN workloads onto the same platform. Now, NVIDIA, as you might expect, features in a lot of multi-company developments being announced here in Barcelona, where references to artificial intelligence are absolutely everywhere. Tech Mahindra has developed a multimodal network operations large model for telcos that was developed using NVIDIA's AI enterprise software, Meta's Llama 3.18 B Instruct model, and AWS cloud infrastructure. And according to Tech Mahindra, its model is, and I quote, heavily customized for telecom networks and enables those traditional networks to become fully autonomous. Meanwhile, global consulting and professional services firm EY has launched a suite of AI agents for telcos that was developed using a broad range of NVIDIA software systems. Called the EY Telecom.ai Agentic Solution, the suite of tools is designed to oper operate across the network, finance, customer service, and content lifecycle management functions of a telecom operator. Turning now to action in the radio access network sector and Airspan Networks, the open RAN supporter that dragged itself out of bankruptcy protection late last year with a new owner and financing, has followed up its recent purchase of Corning's small cell business with the acquisition of Jabil's open RAN radio unit portfolio and associated patents for an undisclosed sum. According to Airspan, the deal includes a range of single, dual and triple band macro radios and Jabil's former radio R&D team. And as a result, Airspan now claims to be, and I quote again, one of the most comprehensive open RAM vendors in the market. And in the world of green digital networks, SK Telecom is teaming up with Giga Computing, a leader in liquid cooling technology, and SK Enmove, a specialist in cooling fluids, to jointly develop cooling solutions for AI data center solutions. Now, in addition, the South Korean self-styled AI company has forged a strategic partnership with energy management and automation specialist Schneider Electric to co-develop mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems for AI data centers to enhance efficiency and sustainability in AI-driven infrastructure. Now, that might all sound a bit dry, but as the digital service provider world shifts towards cloud-based and increasingly AI-enabled platforms, so energy efficiency innovations are going to become increasingly critical. That was Telecom TV's editorial director, Ray Lemaitre, with his exclusive report from the MWC show floor. And Ray will join us again tomorrow with further news and analysis from Barcelona. 
It's three years since UAE-based telco Etisalat became e-and and adopted a new broader technology and investment approach to target more sustained growth. We asked Group CEO Hatem Dawida how the current surge in AI engagement is impacting its strategy and how he sees Ian's role in the AI era. Look, AI has many components. So AI needs connectivity, needs energy, and needs the chipsets. So the operators, by having the connectivity, have a right to be part of that ecosystem. AI, I think, is divided into two parts. One is the operation efficiency, so having more efficient networks, having a better sales, better customer care. And this is, I think, to a great extent working now. The part that is now we are building, and I think a few of the, let's say, leading telcos are doing, is the part where we use the opportunity of AI to generate additional revenues by building data centers, providing AI and computing as a service, consulting the small customers, using the data sets we have to sell opportunities to customers to optimize their business. So this is the opportunity that's still untapped. And you can watch the full interview with Hatem Dawida right here on Telecom TV. Just visit our Spotlight on 5G pages for the very latest videos. Finland-based operator Elisa has built an international software business based on its internal automation solutions. Commercializing in-house technology and expertise is proving to be a very successful DSP strategy. We have this, what we would like to think as world-leading capability around network automation, which is very much about data, about predictive modeling, uh, advanced analytics and machine learning. And uh, today that translates to our customers with better quality of the network. We have all-time high customer satisfaction at the end of last year. And it translates to us as lower OPEX. And now we have effectively taken this capability we have turned that into a software product that we are selling to 100 telcos in the world. Topi also spoke about how the current geopolitical turmoil is impacting markets and strategies. And this will be something that we will discuss further on next week's After Show. We've heard a lot about AI RAN this week, whether that's AI for RAN, AI on RAN or AI and RAN some not so subtle differences there. But are all these versions viable? Well, we asked the CTO of Deutsche Telekom about the prospect of AI on RAN to enable compute inference, essentially edge computing. There could be a time where edge computing be become more relevant. At the moment for me, using GPU in the radio aside, is too expensive, too power consuming, not yet there for us to deploy. That's why we welcome the initiatives. We will see we've been at the forefront of driving the edge computing. Edge starts from the device, goes into servers that you have in your room to run, which is 40,000 sites in Germany, as an example. Right. That is something we have to see evolve. And at the moment, all of this is enabled with our strategy, openness, driving openness, driving intelligence in a secure way. Do try and watch the full interview with Abdu. He also talks about Deutsche Telekom's 5G SA deployments, energy efficiency, and of course, the requirements for 6G. Vodafone has leveraged its internal operations and has this week launched a new commercial unit called Vodafone Intelligent Services, with a roughly 50-50 split between technology and business services. We spoke with the new CEO of the company and asked what they were hoping to achieve by offering these services to other telcos. We have a very, very broad portfolio that's grown over the last 15 years, but it's born out of that rich sort of telco experience, which is a super solid foundation. What we didn't have as an internal captive is sort of that capability and the commercial edge of the SI and professional services ecosystem. So what Voice is looking to do with our new model is combine 
the cost competitiveness and the culture that you get with a great captive with that commercial edge and the capability set of the SI. Uh, and we've chosen to go to market with Accenture in a joint venture to take that to our customers and hopefully unlock more value for them and for the industry as a whole. And you can learn more about this new business model by watching the full interview, which you'll find on our Spotlight on 5G page. Whilst so much focus is quite rightly on building out 5G SA and monetizing the current mobile technology, early work is already underway on the next generation. The 3GPP is currently deciding on a work plan for 6G specifications. We spoke with the new Director General of Etsy, which is the founding partner of the 3GPP, to discover how the organization was helping the industry prepare for 6G. From an Etsy point of view, we are bringing European research results through Etsy into 3GPP. So Etsy is providing a platform where members are coming together to pre-standardize some of the, the uh, 6G research results before they are coming into and being part of the 3GPP process. It's, uh, 6G, I mean, 3GPP will next week have a very big uh, uh, workshop in South Korea where they will discuss the different uh, use cases and, and requirements on 6G. So we are in the very early stages how that process will play out, what, what will be the final requirements on 6G, we don't know yet. As Jan says, we are still in the early stages, but the major stakeholders are moving their pieces and ensuring that their voices are heard in the early planning phase, which is already underway. And much more on this next week as part of our new Defining 6G Networks series. We have also been speaking this week with several of our industry partners about the latest opportunities for telcos and the solutions available. So let's now hear from some of them now, starting with Rima Iontel, who's Chief Architect, Global Telco at Red Hat, who discusses the OpenShift platform. So with our platform, Open, Red Hat OpenShift, uh, we enable our customers and our partners to deploy cloud-native workloads uh, that then turn into services for their end customers. We enable different types of hardware. Uh, for instance, you can put in GPUs in, uh, in your hardware and use it for IoT type of services. Uh, we allow multi-tenancy. We provide a very rich feature set built into our platform that can be used for very advanced type of um, services that you can deploy at the edge that require performance, low latency, etc. Plus you can deploy a platform in different form factors so at the edge, if you only need to put one node, you're able to do that. But if you need to deploy like a smaller cluster, we allow you to do that as well, or, you know, the whole data center. And it's all supported. And we provide that management layer that allows you to manage all of that uh, just seamlessly, right? And it allows you to give access to your own customers to do self-service, um, to give them faster time, you know, faster to innovate and uh, less effort. We also caught up with HPE Aruba Networking, which is using the GreenLake cloud platform to share data between IT operations and network management platforms. So what we see with the customer challenges, especially in network operating, is that they need to have the right visibility. So the networks already get are really complex. So you need to have the right tools to get the right visibility, because what we see is that customers have around five or six different tools to operate their infrastructure or their network infrastructure. Second, if there are any issues or problems, you want to solve them as soon as possible and as quick as possible. And then again, you need to have the right tools and the right resources to do that. So what we have done, like you said, with our recent integration, that we have two platforms that are hosted on our GreenLake Cloud platform. One is called OpsRamp, which is an IT operations platform. And the other one is called HPE Aruba Networking Central, which is a network management system platform. So they're both distinguished platforms. One is more focused on the network infrastructure, and the other one is more focused on the IT operations. So two distinguished platforms, and what we now have done is, because of the power of GreenLake, we can share the data lake together. So now we can use the data of OpsRamp and integrate that as an extension into our network management system. 
Also this week, we spoke with Namrata Sharma of AWS about the impact of Gen AI on mainframe modernization for telcos. We've had customers that started mainframe modernization a few years ago, right? But they were doing it in stages, like let me modernize 20 applications this year, I'll do 20 more. But what they realized was that the mainframe usage was not coming down. With Gen AI coming, especially Q for mainframe transform, customers can reimagine their entire mainframe modernization journey. So they can say, listen, over the course of next five years, I want to change my mainframe landscape. And this is where Gen AI comes in and gives them a very prescriptive path to do that, right? Where they're actually seeing their mainframe utilization reduce, their, their modernized applications really providing those business outcomes, which was the reason why they signed up for it the first time around. Early this week, we spoke with Circles to find out how the company works with mobile operators to help them create new non-telco digital services. I think one of the key things is that um, what we do with our platform is that we actually enable uh, entire ecosystems to connect to the telco world, but also bring the telco world uh, to other industries. Um, and it allows uh, for partners to connect to the platform uh, seamlessly and, f and fast. Um, while keeping, uh, while making sure, let's say, that you also get the insights from the actual customer usage. And I think that enables uh, telcos to actually drive non-telco revenues, whether it's financial services, whether it's gaming, you know, you can think of many things um, that you can offer as additional services to your customer base as well. Abdu Mudassir, chair of the board of the Oran Alliance, spoke to us about how the organization is working to facilitate network intelligence for the radio access network. So I think the Oran Alliance lays the foundation for all the AI or intelligence required. If you look at what we are doing in all the AI initiatives in the radio access, it's either for AI for RAN, which requires the openness of the interfaces to allow for independent capabilities to orchestrate and run the radio access network. That's what Oran Alliance enables. Or even using AI for other kind of compute require the openness of interfaces like open frontal, which enables you to run the baseband in GPUs, CPUs, or any other specialized hardware. And that's exactly what we do. So in a nutshell, from the foundation, the Oran Alliance had the vision to really see that intelligence will play a critical role, AI plays a critical role, and that gets accelerated now. We'll be bringing you interviews with leading CSPs and industry executives throughout the week, adding the videos to our Spotlight on 5G series on Telecom TV. And then next week, it's time for the after show, the return of our Q&A programme, where I'll be analysing the developments from MWC with our studio guests. That's all for today's edition of The Slice. Do join us again on Thursday for another report from Barcelona on day four of MWC, the final day of the show. Until then, from all of the team here at Telecom TV, thank you for watching. And goodbye.